Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. Well, a new bunch of kits arrived. I've got the Festal Capex KS60 in the big box at the back there. And in front, I've got the CTM26 extractor. And I'm going to be doing two videos, one concentrating on the uh, KS60 and the other on the CTM26. Uh, 26. Now, whichever uh, version of the KS60 uh, you buy, you'll get the universal 36 tooth blade and you'll also get uh, one of these clamps. I've got the set version and with that you get additional items. And these items are the LED light, uh, which is here. Uh, and this is something you can retrofit yourself if you wish to at a later date. You get the angle finder and you also get the elevation kit which allows you to raise the saw uh, so that it's then level with a CIS one. Now for simplicity uh, I'm going to be using this machine on my MFT3. Now when you sight the machine there are some things you need to think about. You need to make sure that this adjustable knob under here uh, is actually on the surface of the bench. And the reason for that is that Festal recommend that for heavy loads, you must make sure the end of this assembly here is supported. And what you do is you lower this down until it's then touching uh, the work surface. And that gives some support here. And I think that's fair enough because uh, they've tried to cut the weight down and uh, to make it so rigid that this could withstand the weight of some pretty substantial pieces of wood. Remember, up to 60 millimetres in depth and up to 305 millimetres uh, in uh, width here. Uh, that's going to be a pretty heavy piece of wood. Now, if you look here and imagine there is an equivalent one symmetrically uh, on the other side here, uh, there's a place for a, a bolt to go through. And if you've positioned this on the MFT3 as I have, there are little pads underneath the corners which fit down into the holes of the MFT3 quite neatly. And if one then looks down through here, you can see there is a hole directly underneath. So if you had a uh, eight millimeter threaded uh, bolt and it's 50 millimeters in length, uh, then uh, you can then secure this uh, to your MFT3 or similar type of surface. If you wish to change the mitre angle, uh, first of all ensure that this locking knob is loose. Uh, there's a little uh, finger uh, lever here. You uh, pull up on that and then that allows you uh, to move the uh, mitre angle. Uh, there are detents and it's clicked into one. If you're in between detents and you want to lock it, then use the locking knob. And the angle can be adjusted from 60 this way all the way to 60 that way. And that is a, a huge range and really, really useful. Now I have been curious about how the various detents uh, for the mitre angle have been achieved. And what they've got is uh, in the casting for the uh, base here, uh, they've got the uh, places where the detents should occur. And what I think is uh, pretty good is that the casting has been done uh, to such a fine degree that they've not had to machine these out to achieve greater accuracy. Uh, the casting has been done really nicely. There are no uh, little casting marks which one often sees, which I've actually got on my large capex saw. Uh, this casting has been done extremely well. Now there are two uh, black knobs, one here and one here. Uh, the sliding extension wings, uh, you can release this, move it to whichever position and then tighten it up again and that's now held in place. It's located in the back there is the uh, key for changing the blade. And whilst we're on this side, uh, this green button here, which you can press in, is the spindle lock button. When you wish to change the inclination of the machine, uh, you first have to start by loosening this star knob here at the back. And depending on the angle of inclination you want to set, you, you may find yourself having to remove one or both uh, of these. And there is a, a green button just here. Uh, which you then press in. You can then adjust the angle of inclination and uh, it goes down to the right and then stops. And if you then press this button again, you can go beyond, it stops at 45, you can then go beyond to 46 or 47 degrees. 
and the same is true in the opposite direction. Now when you come back to the center position, you hear the click. Now that click isn't a proper detent, it's a stop and you now push it back against that stop in order to uh, achieve the zero position again and tighten the star wheel. For each uh, inclination angle you set, always tighten the star wheel. Uh, the movable part of the fence, uh, there's a little tightening knob here so you can get it in the right place. You can move it left and right and when it's in the position you want, just tighten it up. And it's the same for both sides. Now to allow the motor assembly to drop, there's this big green one here. You just press that in, like so. And to start the motor, uh, you would press this button at the same time. And I think most people now are used to this arrangement with Festool. I think it works very well. It's very simple. Uh, if you look here, uh, there is a uh, trenching control. I can go all the way down there. If I move this forward, uh, I'm now in a trenching position. At the moment, it's very high. It's quite fiddly to get at, but uh, to allow it to drop, you can go down and you can see this is dropping each time I let that out a bit. Now, just be careful when you release this back up, take your thumb away from there, otherwise you'll squish it very slightly. So that's the trenching setting. I'll just put it back to the normal position now. Now, here is a little uh, locking lever. If you lower uh, the motor assembly down and then move this across, uh, that then holds the motor assembly in the lowered position suitable uh, for transit. And obviously you'd have that one done up at the same time. To release it, move it down, push that back in, and up it goes. And remember to undo that screw. Now from here you can see the other inclination gauge there. Uh, you have the uh, on-off switch for the LED light. And here's the nut uh, for securing the uh, blade in place. And here's the uh, motor speed control. It goes from 1 to 6, uh, which is equivalent to 1300 up to 3500 uh, revs per minute. It's a 1200 watt motor uh, and it's got Festool's uh, MMC electronics inside and that uh, does its best to maintain uh, the speed that you've set for the saw uh, independent of the load conditions. Uh, it also uh, ensures that, uh, that it will not uh, overheat. Now at the back here you can see uh, a dust port and that allows you to use either a 27 or a 36 millimeter hose and this has got the new uh, style bayonet type uh, connection. The old 27 and 36 millimeter hoses will fit that with absolutely no problem at all. Now the machine can be operated uh, even if it's absolutely all the way back against the wall. However, if you want to adjust the mitre angle, then you do need to move it away a little bit. And it's not by very much, probably only about 25 millimeters. And there we go. So, now that's all the space you need at the back. Now I'm going to start the saw for the very first time. Plunge down. And there we go. And you will notice when you start virtually any motor for the first time uh, that you'll get a little bit of a smell, that sort of a, uh, ionization type smell uh, that you, you get uh, because the brushes are bedding in. And so don't get worried about it. Uh, also, with some machines, uh, my, one of my routers uh, in particular, uh, you might see through the little uh, air gaps some sparks where the brushes are. And again, that's whilst the brushes bed in. So don't get worked up about that at all. Now, the blade guard has some holes in it, which uh, to a small extent would allow uh, the shadow line to pass through down onto the workpiece. But I, I don't think that's particularly relevant because you would be... Uh, moving uh, the saw back here and lowering it as you go and what I want you to look at now I'm not going to put my fingers near there because it's everything's plugged in is on the piece of wood and I'll just bring you in closer so you'd be up here somewhere uh, you'd lower the saw down just a bit and you can see that shadow line starting to form and become more and more clear and from where I'm standing and I hope from where you're you're observing now, you can see that there's a pretty clear shadow line. Uh, and you can even see where the slightly fatter uh, tungsten uh, elements on the uh, blade uh, are located. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, and if you're a, a woodworker that wants to get uh, to closer than half a millimetre, 
I wouldn't use a laser. I wouldn't use a shadow line. I'd use a pencil line uh, if it has to be a line you're following and lower the blade down and eyeball it. Uh, or I'd use some measuring gauge. Now, if you had the UG cart with this, then you'd have a built-in measuring gauge and you can do all of that. Those of you who've used the KS120 are probably aware of the need to clean uh, the little window uh, associated with the um, lasers on the KS120. Now with this machine it's an LED light and there's a little window assembly here. Uh, you take that out, give it a clean and then push it back in place and it clicks back. Now if you're working uh, on the floor, on the ground uh, or over some sort of large surface and you want to extend the support for your work pieces then uh, one of the ideas is to use something which is the height of a CIS-1. And this is the CIS MFT. I will be covering this in a later video. And you can see right away there's a difference in height. And that's why you can get this elevating kit. It consists of four extra feet, uh, one at each corner, uh, four set screws, and these look as though they're six mil, uh, probably by about 40 uh, millimeters long, uh, a tool, and also this with the spring. And I won't do question and answer now. This is to replace uh, the uh, arrangement which is under here. You remember I said always make sure that this is on the work surface. Well, if that goes up, you need a, a longer support under here. And that's what that is. Now, these feet are terribly easy to install. And I've only uh, tilted the machine up so you can see what's going on and understand it. In uh, the top of the uh, elevation uh, piece, there is a little recess here. And there's the uh, little bit where you've got the screw thread inside. If you look under here, uh, we've got the little foot that would go through the hole in the MFT3. And so you're trying to locate that into there. Uh, that's it located. And then once that's in place, we're going to put the screw in. I'll do it for this one with it in this position. That's that one done. And I'll just point out these uh, little uh, screw holes here. If you wanted to then screw this down onto your uh, bench top, uh, then you could easily do that. And once you've got them uh, loosely screwed up, you can then finish it off a little more quickly. And don't forget to adjust uh, this support screw at the front here and get it so it's just right. And I hope you can now see that for all practical purposes, that is uh, pretty much uh, all in line. Now, if you allow these little rubber feet under here to slip down into the holes on an MFT3 or something similar, and then don't forget you're going to lose that height equivalence with a CIS-1. Now, there's one thing I do need to show you, and that is what do you do with your angle finder when it's not in use? And I don't want any suggestions, please. And all you do is you move uh, your uh, mitre angle over to the right, and you'll see now you can just make out a little indent there, and there's one here as well. Circular side this way, put it in there, give it a slight angle downwards and then twist, and then it's held in place. So that's where you put it, and it's now out of the way. Remember that if you buy uh, any tool from uh, Festool, as long as you register it uh, shortly after purchase, uh, then that increases your guarantee period up to three years. It includes the service all included inclusive uh, so everything uh, that uh, might uh, need doing in that three-year period will be done by Festool free of charge and it also gives you the theft insurance uh, which if uh, a major tool is stolen uh, then for payment by you of a £100 fee you then get that tool replaced. Now for transport uh, there are a number of things you can do obviously make sure that the inclination uh, star wheel is tightened up and then wrap your mains cord around the cable holder arrangement at the back, like so. And then we're going to move the machine round all the way to the 60 position and lock that in place. Then you're going to push the saw all the way to the back and tighten up this uh, knob here. So that's now got that locked on the uh, guide rails. And now we're now going to lower down. And you remember this little lever here, we're going to move that out. You heard the click and that's it now locked and that's now in the transport position. And there we go. Now that's the end of this first video. In the next video, I'm going to actually put the saw through its paces. I'm going to check the setup to see whether it cuts squarely, nicely, uh, and so on. Uh, and I'm also going to try out some different blades. I've got one for laminate, I've got one for metal. I've never cut aluminium before, so that should be exciting. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.